everybody. Welcome back to Psych Sinks, the Sync Psychology. Uh, again, my name is Prescott, and we're going to finish up Unit 4, uh, States of Consciousness, uh, today. And, sorry, I had a little brain fart there. But let's continue on from where we left off last time. Uh, last time we started up uh, sleep disorders, the effects of those, and also sleep stages. And so we're going to finish up the sleep disorders with narcolepsy. So narcolepsy involves an irresistible urge to fall asleep during waking hours. It is often triggered by states of heightened arousal or stress. Uh, it shares many features of REM, rapid eye movement sleep, including cataplexy, which is a loss of muscle tone while awake, or in some cases, complete paralysis of the voluntary muscles, and hypnagogic hallucinations, which are vivid dream-like hallucinations. So treatment for narcolepsy is psychomotor stimulant drugs. Um, and if you guys wanna have a little laugh. Um, there's a video one of my professors showed us uh, when we were learning about narcolepsy of a narcoleptic dog that you can find on YouTube. And it's like kind of sad, but kind of funny because it would get too excited and just collapse and fall asleep. So if you guys want to check that out, I think that's pretty humorous and you learn a bit more about narcolepsy there. So going on from sleep disorders, we have substance use disorders. So sus substance use disorder is a compulsive pattern of drug use despite negative consequences. That's the DSM-5 edition. Uh, it involves physical and psychological dependence on the drug. And so you have the physiological dependence, physical. It involves changes in normal bodily functions and withdrawal upon cessation or ceasing, stopping of use. Um, and a psychological dependence is an emotional need for the drug. Then Continuing with disorders, we have tolerance, which occurs when a person requires more and more of a drug to achieve effects previously experienced at lower doses, and it is linked to a physiological, physical dependence. And then withdrawal are negative symptoms experienced when drug use is discontinued. So not good stuff. So here we have a nice diagram of drug categories. So you have stimulants, depressants, and hallucinogens, and then you have all these different drugs in here, and it goes a little bit more in separate circles. So psychomotor stimulants like amphetamines, cat, Ritalin, cocaine. You have sedative hypnotics, alcohol barbiturates, F ether, ether, uh, GHB. And then you have, you know, certain drugs that are com combinations of multiple categories. So like marijuana is a combination of a depressant, a stimulant, and a hallucinogen. Continuing on with the drug categories, and I won't go through every example and every effect used with each class of drug, because I don't want this video to be too long, but starting off, oh, and there, you can see right away that they're all psychologically addicting. So we have stimulants, so cocaine, amphetamines, MDMA, ecstasy or molly. Uh, effects on the body include increased heart rate, blood pressure, and body temperature. And then you can see it had a whole lot of effects when used, like increased alertness, mild euphoria, decreased appetite in like low doses, and high doses increase agitation, paranoia, and can cause hallucinations. I was about to say hallucinogens. Um, next class, we have sedative hypnotics or depressants, like alcohol, barbiturates, uh, benzodiazepines, and these can cause uh, or will cause decreased heart rate and blood pressure, um, low doses increase relaxation, decrease inhibitions, high doses can induce sleep, cause motor disturbance, memory loss, decreased respiratory function, and death in extreme cases. Next, you have opiates such as opium, heroin, fentanyl, morphine, and these cause decreased pain, pupil dilation, decreased gut motility, decreased respiratory function, and Effects when used are pain relief, euphoria, sleepiness, high doses can cause death due to respiratory depression. And finally, we have hallucinogens. So marijuana, LSD, peyote, mesco, mescaline, I've never heard of that. Um, and effects on the body are increased heart rate and blood pressure that may dissipate over time. Um, effects when used, mild to intense perceptual changes with high variability in effects based on strain, method of ingestion, and individual differences. And again, these are all psychologically addicting. Not physiologically, psychologically. So going more into depth on different categories, we have depressants, which are drugs that suppress the central nervous system activity. 
Usually, GABA agonists, which have a quieting effect on the brain, work by binding the GABA receptors, which makes the neuron less likely to fire. Again, that's what, and we went on that in unit, yeah, previous unit, unit three. Um, so these include alcohol, barbiturates, barbiturates, so anticonvulsant medication, and benzodiazepines, anti-anxiety medication. Um, they also, alcohol is a depressant, so it decreases your reaction time and visual acuity, lowers levels of alertness, reduces behavioral control, and can result in complete loss of consciousness. And, you know, if you guys are in college or, you know, have seen some people or had it happen to yourself, you can, you know, that alcohol does cause all these. Uh, like I've seen people pass out drunk, um, do really stupid things when they're drunk. So definitely not good to drink too much. But everything in moderation, right? All right, so what is GABA? So the GABA-gated chloride, or CI minus channel, is embedded in the cell membrane of certain neurons. The channel has multiple receptor sites where alcohol, barbiturates, and benzodiazepines bind to exert their effects. So this opens a chloride channel um, and allow, allowing negatively charged chloride ions, CI minus again, into the neuron cell body. So changing its charge in the negative direction pushes the neuron away from firing, thus activating a GABA neuron it has a quieting effect on the brain. So here we have this nice diagram. So, you know, has multiple receptor sites right here for alcohol, benzodiazepines, barbiturates, um, and they bind to exert their effects. So it opens a chloride channel and it allows negatively charged chloride ions in the neuron cell body, which, you know, it's shown right here visually for you. Because visuals help out with that kind of thing. It's easier to visualize something sometimes than just think about it. So next we have stimulants, which increase overall levels of neural activity. So usually dopamine agonists, which work by preventing the reuptake of dopamine. Dopamine activity is associated with reward and craving, therefore these drugs can be highly addictive. These include cocaine, amphetamine, caffeinins, so i.e. bath salts, and MDMA. Side effects can include nausea, elevated blood pressure, increased heart rate, feelings of anxiety, hallucinations, and paranoia. So here we have a nice picture of some crack rocks. So crack rocks like these are smoked to achieve a high. Smoking a drug allows it to enter the brain more rapidly, which can often enhance the user's experience. So dopamine agonists. As one of their mechanisms of action, cocaine and amphetamines block the reuptake of dopamine from the synapse into the presynaptic cell. So you can see right here, reuptake is being blocked by the cocaine. Um, this results in a larger amount of dopamine in the synapse right here. So that's what makes you feel so good. You have a larger amount of dopamine than you normally would. Next, we have nicotine and caffeine. Um, caffeine, caffeine, I combine the two. Caffeine and nicotine are also stimulants. So caffeine involves antagonizing aden adenosine activity and it increases levels of alertness and arousal. Now, nicotine interacts with the acetyl, acetylcholine receptors. It is highly addictive, and it plays a role in arousal and reward mechanisms. A nice picture of coffee, in case you didn't know what those that looked like. Next, we have opioids, which serve as analgesics. I think I said that right, which decrease pain through their effects on the endogenous opioid neurotransmitter system. They are highly addictive and include heroin, morphine, methadone, codeine. So some nice pictures of opioids there. And then we have hallucinogens, which causes changes in sensory and perceptual experiences and can involve in vivid hallucinations. Variable with regard to the specific neurotransmitter systems they affect. So mescaline and LSD are serotonin agonists, and PCP and ketamine are NMDA glutamate receptor antagonists. So, figure 4.21. So psychedelic images like this, these are often associated with hallucinogenic compounds. So if you're hallucinating, you might see something like this on hallucinogens. So medical marijuana shops are becoming more and more common in the United States as states start to legalize marijuana. So, Outside of drugs altering your state of consciousness, we have hypnosis. 
So hypnosis is an extreme focus on the self that involves suggested changes of behavior and experience. Clinicians may use relaxation and suggestion in an attempt to alter the thoughts and perceptions of the patient. Uh, it has been used to draw out information believed to be buried in someone's memory. Unlike portrayals in the media, individuals undergoing hypnosis are in control of their own behaviors. So you're not going to see somebody, like in a movie, somebody gets hypnotized and is forced by the hypnotist to do something. That's not how it really is. Um, people vary in their ability to be hypnotized. So it uses, its uses include pain management, treatment of depression and anxiety, quitting smoking, and weight loss. So here we have popular portrayals of hypnosis have led to some wildly, widely held misconceptions. Again, like being able to hypnotize people to, uh, like in this picture, play in a band or do whatever you want. That's not how hypnosis works in real life. Now, continuing with our other states of consciousness, we have meditation. So meditation is the act of focusing on a single target, such as breath or repeated sound, to increase awareness of the moment. Meditation involves relaxed yet focused awareness, and it shows promise in stress management, sleep quality, pain management, and treatment of mood and anxiety disorder. So figure A, we have this is a statue of a meditating Buddha, uh, representing one of the many religious traditions of which meditation plays a part. And then figure B, people practicing meditation may experience an alternate state of consciousness. So these are two other types of uh, other states of consciousness that don't involve uh, ingesting drugs. So that was unit four. Um, sorry that I've stuttered a bit more. Uh, it's funny because we were talking about sleep deprivation. I've been a bit sleep deprived lately, so I'm trying to uh, get that under control. Maybe I need to try meditation uh, or hypnosis, but. I hope you guys found that unit interesting and educational. Um, again, my name is Prescott. I'm here at Psych Sync, Sync Psychology, and that was the OpenStack Psychology 2E uh, Chapter 4 lecture slides. So, hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day, and I will see you in the next unit. Bye bye.